This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, good health. It takes more than just good health care. We should also value building the kind of world around us that generates health. Building a world where we stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Creating good health for everyone when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. This week on Viewpoints. Between 1919 and 1932, The top five grocers in the country were receiving from 4% of America's grocery dollars all the way up to 30% in just 12 years. Co-ops in a crowded grocery landscape. Then, for a moment, you're part of the recording of history. The timely art of illustration. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. There's an old saying that goes, when you've got your health, you've got just about everything. When you don't, nothing else matters. But what creates good health? Is it good health care? Many people think so. Americans spend 40% more on health care than any other nation in the world, but we're far from the healthiest people in the world. So experts say it's time to think about health differently, rather than just in terms of health care. The question that I always ask is, is there any other sector where we accept that we spend more and get less? And the answer is we do not. So then the question becomes, what is going on? Why is this the case? Why do we accept this about health? And the answer is that we talk about health the wrong way. That's Dr. Sandro Galea, dean of the Boston University School of Public Health and author of Well, What We Need to Talk About When We Talk About Health. When we talk about health, we mean medicine. And The argument is medicine is important. I want to be very clear. There is nothing, in no way, there's not an argument against medicine that says that medicine and clinical care and curative care that restores us to health when we are sick is important and something that we should invest in, something that we should value. But we should also value building the kind of world around us that generates health. We should value building a world where we stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible so we can live a rich, fulfilling life where health becomes a means to the end of living the kind of life we want to live. And that's the shift in conversation we should be having. However, our health has been in a downturn instead over the last 30 years. Galea says it's a direct result of a shift in societal norms. Something turned in our national conversation in the mid-80s to late 80s. And that, of course, was coincident with a substantial shift in our politics towards a much deeper dive into an individualistic market-driven approach to everything we do, including health, treating health more as a consumer good that is up to the individual and allowing market forces and the idiosyncrasies that go with those to determine what we invest in. And I think as a result, disinvesting from these more foundational structures that I am talking about that ultimately create health. So Galea says it's time to shift our focus back, away from individual health care to the societal structures that create health. It's about the compassion that we show towards one another. And it is about creating spaces where we live, work, and play that create opportunities for us to exercise, for us to eat healthy foods, Our children have excellent education to have public transportation that does not pollute the environment and that encourages physical activity to create all of those structures that ultimately keep us healthy for as long as possible. So it creates a conversation that says health is generated through all political and commercial actions that we take. And as a result, we should demand that political decisions, commercial decisions, keep health in mind and perhaps a call for all of us citizens to demand health, to demand health from our politics, to demand health from all of those who are in positions of authority who can 
generate the structures within which we live. Galea believes people of all classes must unite their voices to demand health for everyone. He says the assumption that a person can hide behind privilege provides no protection at all. Ebola came to this country a few years ago as a direct result of crumbling health systems in West Africa, of all places. That is a classic example, a very simple example, of the fact that our health is interconnected. And one could take many other examples. Take recent measles outbreaks showing that our health is interconnected. Take, for example, the number of people who die through nothing that they've done because of motor vehicle injuries, because of drivers who are under the influence of alcohol. Those people had nothing to do with the driver. And they happen to be pedestrians who end up being killed by pedestrians. Take, for example, the number of people who have cavities and poor oral health simply because of the water they happen to be drinking. These are all manifestations of what I talk about in the book, which is that health needs to be seen as a public good. We need to understand that your health, you're sitting in Chicago, my health, sitting in Boston, are intimately interlinked and that we cannot wall our health off from each other. Galea tells the tragic story of blind Willie Johnson, a blues musician born in Texas in the early 1900s. The story is that he had lie thrown in his face in a domestic violence incident when he was seven, so he was blind. And he grew up poor, blind, black in Texas during the 20th century and learned how to play guitar, which is how we remember him today, but did not make a very good living. He got married, lived in a small house, which burned down, but then he had no money to live anywhere else, so him and his wife kept living in the burnt down husk of the house. And when he was around 40, he developed malaria, which was fairly common in the 1940s in Texas. And his wife took him to hospital, and he was turned away from hospital. And it's not clear if he was turned away because he was poor, because he was blind, or because he was black. And then he died. Now, I tell the story because I ask a listener, well, what killed Blind Willie Johnson? Well, what killed him is obviously malaria. It was also homelessness and poverty and domestic violence and racism and poor access to care. Change will take compassion and progressive thinking. And Galea sees a wave of it in young millennials. He finds it encouraging. If these generations lead the way, I think those of us who are older would do well to follow. And I am excited about the potential to have younger generations point to a vision of a world where we recognize that health is a shared value, that health should be a public good that is not there to be traded or sold or to be seen as a commodity that some people can have and others cannot have. And that ultimately, health needs to be generated in every decision that we make. And we should elevate that to be an issue of high national importance. You can read more about our conversation in Dr. Sandro Galea's book, Well, available now. You can learn more about all our guests by visiting our website at radiohealthjournal.net. Our writer producer this week is Polly Hansen. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Nancy Benson. Radio Health Journal returns in just a moment. Father's Day is a great reminder that Dad can't take his health for granted. For example, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in American men, excluding skin cancer. Though many men are hesitant, a PSA screening test may be a good idea. That's because prostate cancer is very treatable when detected early. Dr. Robert Meyer of the Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle says there are several treatment options available. Each man's particular cancer, health, age, and lifestyle will aid in determining which is right for him. One option to consider is stereotactic body radiation therapy, or SBRT, which delivers very high doses of precise externally administered radiation over a small number of treatment sessions. It precisely targets tumors while minimizing the radiation dose to healthy surrounding tissue. SBRT can be completed in just four or five sessions. Talk to your doctor to find out which treatment option is right for you. To learn about one approach to providing SBRT, visit www.cyberknife.com. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, and the Alzheimer's Association is joining forces with the Ad Council in a new campaign, encouraging families to talk about memory loss and other potential warning signs of Alzheimer's disease. Ruth Drew, Director of Information and Support Services for the Alzheimer's Association. Close family members are typically the first to notice memory issues or cognitive problems, but they are often hesitant to say something, even when they know something is wrong. This new campaign is aimed at empowering families to have these conversations before a crisis occurs. 
titled Our Stories, the new campaign targets family members and features real stories, encouraging people to notice the signs, trust their gut, and start a conversation. It's an essential first step on the path toward managing disease-related changes. Families can start with ABC, assess changes, begin a conversation, and contact the Alzheimer's Association for help at alz.org slash our stories. How much do you know about migraine? June is National Migraine and Headache Awareness Month, so it's a great time to start learning. You probably know that migraine can be disabling and marked by severe head pain. But did you know that migraine is the third most prevalent illness in the world? In the U.S. alone, millions of people are affected by migraine. And did you know that one in three patients with migraine avoid planning activities because they fear a migraine attack will force them to cancel? Are you losing precious moments to migraine? What if you could find more moments with less migraine? A Jovi Fremenizumab VFRM injection is a prescription medicine for the preventive treatment of migraine in adults that reduces monthly migraine days and for some, cuts their migraine days by 50% or more. A Jovi is the only preventive treatment for migraine that can be taken quarterly as three 225-milligram injections or monthly as one 225-milligram injection. Do not use if you are allergic to a Jovi or its ingredients. A Jovi may cause allergic reactions such as itching, rash, hives, swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or throat, or trouble breathing hours to one month after use. Get medical help right away if you have swelling or trouble breathing. Common side effects of Ajovi include injection site reactions. For more information about Ajovi, including the full prescribing information, talk to your doctor. Call 800-887-8100 or visit ajovi.com. Thank you for listening to Viewpoints Radio, a production of Media Tracks Communications. If you enjoyed this broadcast, please support our show by subscribing, sharing it with a friend, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. You can find more Viewpoints stories on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and ViewpointsOnline.net. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Viewpoints Radio. Viewpoints Radio.